Our first customer is someone I've known for over 30 years, going back to when we were students together in engineering at MIT. He's a, not only a brilliant designer of robotic arms and hands, as you're going to see in a few moments, and a great friend of mine, but he's also SolidWorks customer number one, the first order we ever got for SolidWorks. Please join me in welcoming from Barrett Technology, the founder and CEO, Dr. Bill Townsend. Hey. Hi, John. It's good to see you. Welcome to SolidWorks World, Bill. Thank you. Wow. There's, there's, there's more than one user now. Yeah, there's more than one user, right, right. I mean, what, Bill and I, back in the day, we could have had SolidWorks World. I mean, we could have just gone for lunch together. That's right. And that would have been the whole thing right there. And I, but, I understand you just uh, hit a million users uh, recently. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we, we have over a million yeah. SolidWorks users now. And, right. Yeah, thank you all. I mean, it's you guys that do it, you know. If the and other nine, this is 5,000 seating capacity, right? Right. If the other 995,000 showed up, it doubled the population yeah. of San Antonio. Well, I think. yeah, that's true. That's true. We might have more SolidWorks users than would fit in the city. Yeah. That would yeah. be a nice problem. Uh, Bill, you know, thanks for being customer number one. But beyond just giving us the order for SolidWorks, Bill gave us a whole lot more. Because when I was originally thinking about the plan for SolidWorks, yeah, there's the actual <laughs> order. Net when, 120. <laughs> You know, but before we ever took any orders, when I was deciding whether or not to start the company, you know, should I, shouldn't I start it, I went to Bill for advice. He was my friend and advisor, and he gave me encouragement. He said, John, go do this thing. And I got to tell you, without his advice and support and encouragement, we all might not be here today. So thank you, Bill, again. Okay, that was great. I you don't know. know what you're uh, thanking me for, but um, I should well, be thanking you, I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're, anyway. you're, it's been great. So, Bill, there were lots of robots in the world for many years. Lots of old robots existed before you started Barrett Technology, right? Yep. Okay. So why, why start Barrett? Why build new robots? Right, right. Well, we wanted to have robots that worked around people. Before we came along, um, there was sort of what we call Robotics 1.0 which is robots that go from point A to point right. B to point mm -hmm. A to point B and do that for five years. We wanted to go beyond that. Um, these robots that go from point A to point B were very dangerous around people and the rule was to segregate the people from the robot. And you know, it, it didn't make sense if you were gonna look into the future and there was gonna be like, for example, robotic surgery how do you separate the robot from the person and do robotic surgery? So we call that Robotics 2.0, and, and that's, that's, I think, starting to come into its own. And we actually have video here, like starting with the handshake. Yes. These are Bill's robots from Barrett Technology, robotic arms Right, and, and so those aren't pre-programmed. The, the handshake is not pre-programmed. It's just following the forces of the handshake. Yeah, I think that's iconic of working with Yes. Uh, working with humans. And, and uh, they're getting um, force feedback as they do this task. They can feel the, the very gentle torques as they're grabbing this, this, this bag and opening it and manipulating it. Now, in the real world, they might be looking for something other than a flashlight. Is yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. And, uh, but you, you can tell by the military garb. It's amazing the way you work with soft objects. With I've seen Bill's robots and unzip right. a zipper. Right? Yes. Um, look at this. Um, yeah, so it's following a, a path, a trajectory at yeah. the end point, and uh, doesn't know that those people are going to show up. Yeah. There goes the warranty. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there goes, yeah, no warranty claims on that one. But again, it's amazing also, having been around Bill's robots a bit, not only are they human friendly when they touch you, but when you touch the robot, it's just really cool. You, you grab the robot, it's like grabbing someone's arm. That's right. You know? And so what kinds of technology did he have to build in order to get that to happen? Well, we build gearless, gearless drives. So uh, robots today, all robots other than ours, use some form of, of either gear or harmonic drive, which is a form of a gear. And, um, and we don't. We, we use gearless uh, by using cables 
uh, aircraft cables, we get extraordinarily smooth torque, which is something that we need uh, in order to do this, this uh, force feedback that we have with people. And no gears. And yeah, no, no gears. gears. No gears. And you also have like virtually uh, no back backlash. And That's right. Friction so the backlash problems, right? is gone. The friction is very low. Really nice mechanical drives. Um, and uh, you know, it it it's really made our our products work well. And so on the, on the mechanical drives, you you pioneered the cable drive system. Now on the electrical side, I know you had some tough wiring problems, right? We did. We did. Wiring, um, someone once asked me, uh, uh, this is about 15 years ago, what is the hardest part about designing a robotic arm? And I said, the wiring. Uh -huh. Wiring. And, and I know a lot of customers tell me the same thing in their own uh, machine designs, their own products, right? The wiring can be a really tough it problem. It can be a right? tough problem. Yeah. And so, so um, how many wires did you have running into the robot? We had a roughly 100 wires going into the base wow, of the robot yeah. to serve as seven motors. And those wires come from the big controller cabinet, That's right? That's right. It comes okay. from the big controller cabinet and um, things about the size of a refrigerator. Um, and you know, it's just massive. Yeah, something you'd, most of you would be familiar right, with, a big cabinet of motor control electronics. And, and how did you solve this problem with the wires? Well, it was sort of um, by mistake. Uh, we, you know, it's like, like a lot of inventions. It started out with we were trying to get smoother torque, and these uh, motor controllers did not give us the smoothness that we needed. And it turns out, um, and we just got a patent on this two weeks ago, it turns out that if you make the controller really small, keep the distances very short between components, that the torque becomes very, very smooth and very important to us. So by making it small, all the uh, components that, that normally are there, we, our invention gets rid of a lot of components. So we were able to make it small, but we needed to use SolidWorks in order to uh, nest the components now, together. Now wait, when you say small, you took yeah. the refrigerator size box of motor electronics. How small did you make it? Well, I brought one with me. I, I by mistake, carried this through uh, airport security. Oh, that must have been interesting. Yeah, and uh, they, you know, they never stopped me. It looks like a coin. So this is what you call the puck, right? This is what we call the puck. And what's in there, Bill? Um, an entire motor amplifier is in here and also the encoder function is in here. And uh, there's a 32-bit DSP, so it acts like a you know, PC, basically. So you, so, you took, um, and you, so you took all that controller electronics and power electronics and put it right at the point of the motor in that little puck. Exactly. It's about the size of what used to just be the shaft encoder, yep. right? Pretty cool, use, really. Yeah, it is yeah a nice I think trick. that's really cool. <laughs> you know, and so um, Bill, and how did you, you mention you use SolidWorks to fit everything together to fit those that's boards? Right. That's right. We needed to dovetail the electronics. We have uh, a pair of uh, ten-layer boards that come really close together, and the components on those boards had to be nested. So it was a very yeah, complex so design problem because it electrically it has to be right, and mechanically it has to be right. It's, this is really amazing. So, and what happened to the count of the wires by doing this? We uh, got to a count of four. Four wires. Four so wires. He we went, we went from 100 wires to four. Yeah. yeah just four wires. Yeah. So it is, I'm going to give you applause, too, because <laughs> it's just awesome. I mean, you see the robot doing these amazing motions, and then, you, you know, where's all the wires? And there's no more cabinet, right? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, we, there's, there's no motor cabinet. Guys. We used to have, we used to have the three phase cabinet. power, 20 amp lines. So this is yeah. a controller Oh, cabinet. right, the power, too. This blew me away when Bill told me about <laughs> the power. You got it. Yeah, so you had, right. of course, you'd expect three phase, 220 three phase coming in that box, right? right? That was the old way, right? Yeah. With the puck, what happened? Well, with the puck, uh, it also was serendipitous that the invention calls for this to be very simple, and it's got not the amount of electronics that those controllers have. The amount of power that it takes to run a WAM today, which is WAM is the name the, of our yeah, robotic arm, arm uh, takes five nine-volt batteries, and that'll run it for 20 minutes. Yeah. You got that, guys? He can run the robot you saw doing the human-like motions. I've seen it. 
it, it, I've seen it with my own eyes on five nine volt batteries. It's it's unbelievable, you know. And yeah, it is. It's really unbelievable. Thank you very much. And I'm really hoping that you can not only hear Bill's story and say that's cool, but many of you go back. For those of you who are doing machine design, maybe you can use some of these lessons, right? Push sure. the electronics out to the motor. And not only do you reduce the wiring and get better results, but you reduce that power consumption because so much of what I learned from Bill is so much power is wasted in these electronics That's right. with no value add. So That's amazing, right. really amazing story. Bill, you have to feel great. You've come so long in your life dedicated to making these, these human-like robots, and now you're seeing them used in all kinds of cool applications. Thanks for being customer number one. Thanks for Absolutely. sharing your story with us. Thank you. We really appreciate it.